Jesus will sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay. Uh, good evening and uh, welcome to our devotion tonight. Uh, we are privileged to have our dear brother Brian Jenkins join us uh, from Wales in the United Kingdom. Um, you will share with us a devotion um, tonight. Um, but before we do that, we will get into a time of, uh, a time of prayer. Uh, just um, uh, a few prayer items. Um, I've just been advised that young Matthew Chimudzi, um, young Matthew Chimudzi pricked his foot with a wire. I think it's lockdown garden playing. And um, Sister Miti reckons that she needs, a, she needs a jab and they are waiting for the doctor's feedback as we speak. And so we will have to pray for him. In addition, he got himself a bee sting. Um, he's apparently allergic to that, and we need to pray for him. And uh, we will, as usual, pray for our brethren in the front line. We will pray for our dear sister, Miti. Um, we will pray for Brother Johnson in Uganda. Uh, we will pray for Dr. Majude in the United Kingdom. And Miss Majude just advised me that there are uh, three other sisters there. I'm just looking up for the names uh, that we need to be praying for. One of them uh, is a nurse also in the United Kingdom called Rose Nkomo. Um, and there is Charmaine and Laura. I just got the names, Charmaine and Laura, no names there and Rose and Como, one is in the United Kingdom that also need our prayers. Uh, we continue to pray for uh, our brethren in, um, in, in Italy. Uh, the brother Fares will give us an update next uh, Wednesday when he joins us for the devotion. He will speak next Wednesday and give us an update of what's happening in Italy. Um, but he advises that... Uh, our brother Umbrito is still at home, he's still in isolation, so is his son, and that um, we still have two nurses there who have problems with, uh, with breathing. And uh, the last that we got from the sister Hilary in France is that your son has almost recovered. Your son is almost recovered, so we thank the Lord for answered prayer. So we will get into a time of prayer. And then we will um, ask our brother Brian Jenkins to share the devotion tonight. Uh, may I ask our brother Caesar Luswili to open with a word of prayer? Hello? Are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you, brother Caesar. Okay, let's pray, shall we? Our great God of glory, we want to bow before your presence to thank thee for your sustenance for us. We are thankful, Father, for keeping us close to yourself, protecting us and preserving us in the land of the living. We thank our Father for the measure of health and strength. We are thankful for the breath of life. We are thankful for many things we take for granted, the shelter we live in the clothing we wear, the families we have, we are thankful to know our Father that all good and perfect gifts come from above. Mm. Now, our dear Father, we want to uphold before thee those afflicted in body, as has been mentioned, those in Italy, our brother Umbeto, his son, the other saints, the two nurses, 
who have difficulties in their breathing. Father, we pray that thou who is here is inclined to the fetish cries of thine people. We will hear us, our Father, and have pity on these dear ones, and stretch forth your hand, touch them, and restore them back to health and strength. We are mindful of our Father, even those in France, the son to our sister Hirari. We are thankful, our Father, for the last we had that he had made tremendous recovery. We pray, our Father, for complete restoration to health and strength. We are mindful of other saints who are, could be in the United States, those in the UK. We think of those in Spain and those in many other parts of the world who are afflicted by this virus. We pray for each one of them that thou, our Father, who is the great physician, may touch them and heal all of them. Sovereign God, we are now mindful of those who are part and parcel of the frontliners and our father are involved in the treatment, in the control of this COVID-19. We are mindful in this regard of our sister, Mrs. Mitty. We are mindful of our brother, Johnson. We are mindful of our brother, the one in the UK, the medical doctor. We are mindful of our father of the other two sisters, one uh, in Como, and the other one, our father, whom we may not mention by name, but she is part and parcel of the frontliners and those who are discharging their duties, our father, even to control and to treat this pandemic. We pray, our father, that you may gracious, be gracious upon them, our father, even as they discharge their duties. Father, we pray that you protect them, that they may not contract this virus. And our father, we pray that you may give them the good health you may give them the strength even to continue, even to do their duties. Sovereign God, our Father, we chat in heaven. We are now mindful of those who have lost their loved ones, even to this coronavirus. We are mindful of those saints in Italy, especially who have lost quite a number of believers who have been called home to glory. We are thankful, our Father, that to be with the Lord, as the Apostle Paul would put it, is far better. But our Father, we realize that the saints still needed them. But our Father, as they go through this grieving time, we pray, our Father, for comfort. We pray for encouragement. We pray, our Father, that for those who are part and parcel of their relations and they are still perishing in sin, we will, our Father, realize that life at best is very brief and that they will flee for refuge even by confessing our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, as their Lord and personal savior for salvation. Mm -hmm. Sovereign God, our Father, which are in heaven, we are mindful for which one of us, how we have been affected by this pandemic in various ways. Father, we pray that as even as we go through this storm of this COVID-19 pandemic, we may continue, our Father, to feel your presence with us. We are thankful, our Father, for the assurance from your word that you shall not leave us, but you shall be with us even until the end of the world. And again, our Father, we are thankful for the assurance from Scripture that you are able to keep each one of us from falling and to present each one of us faultless before the presence in glory with exceeding joy. We thank our Father for the common ground of salvation we have based on faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, having been drawn from different walks of life with different backgrounds, and yet our Father to have the common foundation of salvation even by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And much more, our Father, we are thankful for the joy that crowns our days, that up yonder is being prepared as a place which has foundations, whose architect and the builder is yourself. We pray, our Father, that as we undergo this, our earthly pilgrimage, you may continue to undertake for us. For tonight, our Father, even as we sit to listen to your word, we pray, our Father, that you may speak through Line seven, our dear brother, Mr. Jenkins, even as he preaches to us, we pray, our Father, that you may give him clarity of speech, clarity of thought, and simplicity of thine word. We pray, our Father, that each one of us who have room, even for thine message, that your message may not return to the void, but that it will accomplish that which it was purpose. We look to thee, our Father, commending each one of us to you, giving thanks in the name of our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, we will immediately hand over to our brother Brian Jenkins. Good. Shakana Kai. Maneru Ama Zose Jangu Tadiwa Jamwari Tinotenda E Maneruano. It's good to be with you. God bless you. God be with you. I I want to read first of all from Psalm sixty two. That's what I'm going to be focusing on, but I want to read some other portions before we get to these. Uh, my thoughts tonight are, have been sort of raised by two of our brothers who have quoted the scripture I'll read just now from Deuteronomy. But uh, let's read now in Psalm 62 and starting at verse 5. Psalm 62, verse 5. It says there, My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. And as always, we trust that God will bless the public reading and exposition of his word. On Saturday, we were thinking about our need of light and darkness in these uncertain times. My thoughts tonight are moved towards the idea of stability. Do we, are we able to be stable? Are we able to, to find stability in these days of such uncertainty? We have a situation now in, in the UK. Uh, I don't know whether it's been brought up in Zambia or in, uh, in Zimbabwe. But here we, we have a lot of uh, care homes for our elderly people. And it is, it is sad to report that there have been thousands of deaths in these care homes. And it, it just heightens the uncertainty that we face day by day. I'm sure all of you, as, including myself, my, my dear wife's mother, is is in hospital at the moment looking to be moved to a care home next week in the word of the lord but uh we're, we're all facing that uncertainty but when we come back to the scriptures there there were many people that faced uncertainty and to to go back to the scripture that that was quoted from deuteronomy it's in deuteronomy 32 and it says this there's a song that's been put to these words. In verse three of chapter 32, Moses says, for I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice, a God of truth, and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. So remarkably, Moses says, I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. If you go back to the book of Numbers, you, would, you, you will discover there that Moses was asked by God to speak to a rock. But because of Moses' frustration with the people of God at that time, who were still in the wilderness, they got to the point where Moses struck the rock instead of speaking to the rock. And the result was that Moses was told that after 80 years of leading the people of Israel, he would not enter the promised land. If you trace through the scriptures, it was only Caleb and Joshua of the people that came out of Egypt that actually entered the land. Remarkable situation. But even though the problems for Moses came about because of a rock, he could say, ascribe greatness to our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. Remarkable, that not it, that Moses was able to say that in the face of such adversity. So that's Deuteronomy 32. I'm turning over now to 1 Samuel and chapter 2. 
and we have a, a woman here who has been through terrible adversity. She was married to a man called Elkanah who took a separate wife called Penina. And we discover in chapter one that Penina mocked Hannah because she was childless. She was barren, she could not bear children. And so the latter part of First Samuel chapter one is taken up with Hannah's prayer in her adversity that she could do something for God. God's people were again in dire straits and needed leadership. And Hannah knew she couldn't take that role on but she looked for someone that would, would take on that responsibility. And she asked God for a son. And that, because of God answered her prayer and gave her, and gave her conception for the son that we know to be Samuel, Anna was able to praise God for his goodness. And she, she said in Psalm in, in chapter two of uh, first Samuel, my heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you, nor is there any rock like our God. So we have there Hannah coming out of her uh, uncertainty, her, her difficult times, and then being able to acknowledge God as a rock. Now to the verses that we read then. It's a Psalm of David, again, a man who was very familiar with adversity. And we have these words, my soul waits silently for God alone. What we're going to think about in these verses, first of all, in verse five, the believer's pursuit. And then in verse six, the believer's peace. Verse seven, the believer's power. And then verse eight, the believer's provision. So verse five, David says, my soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. One of the difficulties of living in a country like this, like the, like the UK, is that people have come to expect to be able to resolve their problems instantly. We call it instant gratification. One of the things that I learned spending 14 years living in Africa was that nothing comes in a hurry. You wait for things, you learn lessons. And uh, sometimes things we wanted to happen didn't happen in our time, but uh, have happened since in the goodness of God that he has brought things around. And I will be honest with you, it, it, is, a, it is a privilege for me to share these times, particularly with Brother Lewis, that uh, worked with me so well in the years that we were in Zimbabwe. Precious, precious times. But we, we need to be those that wait for God. So I, the, the, I asked the question, what, what are you pursuing? Isn't it remarkable that the Lord Jesus said to so many when he was here, I, I think, particularly of a situation we find in John chapter 21. Peter had had a special account, encounter with the Lord Jesus, and he saw John passing, and he said to, to the Lord Jesus, what about this man? And the Lord Jesus says, what is, it, what, what is it to you? What happens to this one? He said, follow me, follow me, follow me. And that's why I use that word pursuit. What are we following after? What are we looking for? Where are we going in these times of uncertainty? We need a rock. My soul waits silently for God alone. My expectation is from him. He only is my rock. So I ask, what is your pursuit? What are you, what are you going after during these difficult times? So then in, in, in verse six, then he is the, our peace. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. And David says, in all his adversity, I shall not be moved. Do you know what would be interesting? Is once the lockdowns in all our countries are lifted, it would be interesting to come back. We will, we, we will continue. 
but to have that evening, to have that time to just reflect on where we've come from and how we are going on. Do we have that peace? If we dread on in chapter 14, uh, uh, that John was, uh, John was reading on Sunday, we'd have had the words of the Lord Jesus, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives. And it, that peace is that which passes all understanding, we find in Philippians chapter four. So do you have that peace? Do you know who you are following? Do you know what you're pursuing? Do you know that peace that passes all understanding? Because it, it is a peace that garrisons, that guards our hearts and minds. It's a wonderful thing. And it's because God is our rock. That stability that we need during these times of uncertainty. But not only is he our peace, he is our power. In verse 7, David says, In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. You know, one of the little words of scripture is, is that word my. Don't ever miss it out. It is always important. We know the words, don't we, so well. The Lord is my shepherd. And it is, it is one thing to have a shepherd, to know that the Lord Jesus is the good shepherd, how much better it is to have one who is my shepherd. There's a personal relationship with him that makes all the difference. So as a result of him being our shepherd, being our Lord, being our life, he is the rock of my strength. Are you basing your life on, on him in these times? Because we'll, it's so easy to find ourselves in, in the sinking sand that we, we hear of from the hymn writer, which we'll come to in just a moment or two. So. Do you have that power that comes from the Lord? You know, people expect the power of God to be able to do strange things. But the power of God in these days particularly is that which can keep you and hold you and keep you in your testimony while, while all around us is giving way. But then lastly, in verse 8, he is our provision. And it says, trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. It's remarkable, isn't it? The Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, a present help in time of trouble. And we, re we remember that Moses wanted to see God. But God passed by and the... The passing, passing by of God was a great event, but God, God hid Moses in the cleft of a rock. And that gave rise to the hymn writers saying, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in the remarkable. Do we have that refuge? You know, in Psalm 73, the, the priest there said, that his foot had not well nigh slipped. He was almost gone spiritually until, he says, I entered the sanctuary. He found his refuge in the place where he worked, where, his, where, where the, the focus of his work was the sanctuary, the temple. And it was only when he went in there that he, he could see and get things back in perspective. And it is only when we are trusting in God, God has provided himself as he did for Abraham going up to Mount Moriah, God provides himself for us as a refuge and we take our refuge in him. So what about us? What happens to us if our feet nearly slip? Well, we go to the Psalm prior to this one, Psalm 61. And again, it's a Psalm of David. And in verse one, he says, hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. He says, from the end of the earth, I will cry to you. Now listen, when I am overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And those are words that are precious to me 
my brother, my sister, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. It's remarkable that our world is, is being decimated by something so very, very small. But I will remind you as we, as we come to an end this evening, as, as certainly of my, my, my thoughts, as we, as we look at the things around us, as we look at the problems, our God is bigger than any problem that you will face. And we have that absolute comfort, that absolute certainty that we can come to him. And so David says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I trust that as we continue, that we'll encourage each other to be faithful, to follow on, to have our pursuit of God, to have peace in God, to have power with God, and to enjoy God's provision of a refuge for us as we face uncertain times. My brothers, brothers and sisters, it is a joy and a privilege to meet with you in this way day by day. I count it a precious thing indeed. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Amen. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Brian, for sharing with us um, this evening. Um, we will ask uh, a brother that uh, we worked with uh, with you in Zimbabwe, uh, but who is in Zambia. Uh, I noticed that our brother Evaristo Yamboto is online or he's just disappeared, uh, just as I was about to. Uh, brother Evaristo, are you still there? Our brother Evaristo has just disappeared. Uh, it would have been good to have him pray. Uh, we recall uh, the times that we had together in Zimbabwe. Uh, we, will, we will pray uh, for the various matters that we have been praying for. And let me ask my dear brother, Mr. Miti. It's also good to see our brother, Tendaika Chepa, uh, joining us uh, this evening. He hasn't joined us in a while. And... Um, our brother Tendai is the musician that uh, took over from our brother Brian. Uh, so he, he plays the music in Bethany Chapel. So it's good to have two people that have played uh, the music and led the worship. Uh, brother Miti, could you please pray in closure? Just to mention that speaking tomorrow will be our brother John Bell. Our brother John Bell will share tomorrow night. And um, we didn't connect to Facebook for some reason tonight, but we have got the recording, which we will post immediately after this meeting. meeting. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, Brother Miti. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Father, for this day that you have given us. We thank you, Lord Father, for the gift of life, that you are alive today, for the creation of us. We thank you, Lord Father, for the way you are shared this evening with our brother, Brian Jenkins. Thank you, Lord Father, for the way, Father, which uplifts our hearts. We thank Lord Father for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank Lord Father that was God who came from heaven and dwelt on this planet. Even though he was God Father, he humbled himself to be a servant. We thank Lord Father for his humbleness. Thank you, Lord Father, for his word, which he preached to us, which you have been up to this very day, though it happened over 2,000 years ago. Thank you, Lord Father, for your word, which all is new in our hearts. We are the same yesterday, today, and you continue, Father, watching over us on a daily basis.
thank Lord Father for protection. We thank Lord Father for your sustenance and provision. We thank Lord Father that you are God who has taught us this word that we never never us alone. That we send us the Holy Spirit, which is with us every day. And we thank Lord Father for we have told us in the way that you are coming back and we believe in your way. For you know Father the way is life. Your way sustains us. Thank you, Lord Father for each and every person who listen to your way this evening. Thank you, Lord Father. God, who is faithful. We commit for those who are afflicted in body also unto thee in various parts of the world. That Father, you stretch your healing hand upon them. That Father, you touch them, that you heal them. For we know, Father, that Master Healer, no one is able to apart from you. We also pray for those who are in the front line in this COVID 19. For your protection, Father. For we know, Father, they are putting their lives at risk. But we know, Father, that those who believe in you, Father, you protect them because they are on thee. We pray, Father, even as we return to this evening, Father, that you watch over us. That, Father, as you will, as you will Father, tomorrow we meet again. We hear another devotion for our dear brother. Thank you, Lord Father, for your love. And we pray all this, thanking you, Lord, for everything that you do. Pray all this in his great and precious name. We will our soon coming King, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Brother Miti, and uh, thank you for joining us this evening. We'll meet you tomorrow evening, 19.30 hours, when we join our, or rather when our brother John Bell joins us to share a word of encouragement. For now, it is good night and God bless. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.